Uh, our next witness is Mr. Justin Brown. Uh, he's the legislative associate of the Veterans of Foreign Wars. The VFW is the nation's oldest major veterans group with more than 1.7 million veterans who have served our nations overseas. Mr. Brown is also a veteran of the United States Navy, serving one deployment in support of Operation Southern Watch and two deployments in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. Uh, Mr. Brown, welcome and thank you for your service. Thank you, Chairwoman. Madam Chairwoman, Ranking Member Graves, and members of this committee, on behalf of the 2.1 million members of the Veterans of Foreign Wars and our auxiliaries, I'd like to thank this committee for the opportunity to, to testify and for your efforts to expand small business opportunities for veterans. The issues under consideration today are of great importance to our members and to the entire veteran population. During this economic recession, the number of unemployed veterans has increased to 1,124,000 as of February. The unemployment rate of our youngest veterans has reached a staggering 21%, and there are more unemployed OEF, OIF veterans than there are service members in Iraq and Afghanistan. During these tough economic times that have proven tumultuous for America's newest, America's newest veterans, the prospect of starting a business is particularly appealing. Veterans, if given the opportunity, will succeed in small business because they understand the concept of hard work, can adapt quickly to changing times, and are goal-oriented. However, for a veteran interested in entrepreneurship, the reality is quality resources are scarce, disjointed, and available to few. In order for veterans to succeed, in, small, in, federal, in the federal procurement marketplace, we need training, as there is a lack of geographically viable options for veterans. We need access to capital, as there has been less than 153 loans distributed under the Patriot Express loan program. We need compliance with existing laws and statutes, as a host of federal agencies that after more than a decade continually and willfully fail to abide by their public mandates. And we need agencies that work together and for veterans. We must do more. And we ask that Congress continue to hold these agencies accountable with rigorous oversight. In 2008, the federal government was roughly halfway to providing 3% of all federal contracts to small, disabled, veteran-owned small businesses. In 2009, preliminary numbers suggest 2% of all federal contracts went to them. The Department of Defense barely surpassed 1% of contracts for small disabled veteran owned small businesses in 2008. The fact that the largest federal agency continues to fail its former ser service members that were disabled in service to it is absolutely unequivocally unacceptable. It is shameful that the Department of Defense has so egregiously failed their own population for more than a decade. The VFW calls on all federal agencies to absolutely reach their 3% goal in fiscal year 2010. Preliminarily, the American Recovery Reinvestment Act is proving that the 3% goal can be met. Our understanding is that 4% of recovery dollars have gone to small, disabled, veteran-owned small businesses. With the unshakable will of Congress and this administration, there should be no reason for the 3% mandate to be unmet for the 11th consecutive year. As America's largest group of combat veterans, we thank you for allowing the Veterans of Foreign Wars to present its opinion on this very important matter. We also thank you, Madam Chairwoman, this committee, and your staff for your rigor in passing legislation that will make these long overdue much needed changes for America's veterans. Veteran entrepreneurship, if encouraged, is a win-win for everyone, including the government and America's taxpayers. Madam Chairwoman, this concludes my testimony, and I'll be pleased to respond to any questions you or the members of this committee may have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Our next witness is Mr. Robert Spence.